I wanted this whole film to feel slightly out of time, that you couldn't quite pinpoint it. It's, it's by, it is contemporary, but it's one that's not the exact reality that we live in. I thought it was a wonderful example of a film noir. They are heroes that you, you don't really know where they came from, you don't really know where they're going, but you know that they're, they're carrying with them in them a dark past. Film noir to me has always been about an, an unexpressed sense of alienation. There's a lot of things that happen within the film and a lot of places that the audience has taken and then kind of taken somewhere else quickly and twists and turns and that's the film, that's what's exciting about it. The door's this way. You look as lost as I am. It's not a complicated story at all. It's a story that there is a murder, there is a policeman, there is a mysterious woman who passes by the murder scene, but we don't quite know who she is and what she's done and where she's going. And the policeman follows this lady because he's, for some reason, is rather sort of strangely fascinated by something about her. It's a psychological thriller, the subject matter being about the mind, memory, and I think growing old. We begin this journey with uh, Bernie and Anna, who are very, very lonely people at the time we meet them, and as lonely as many, many people are in their lives. Have we met before? You think? You seem familiar. Mm, I, I guess I have that, that kind of face. It's a nice face. I don't know why it is that people connect. We can bring our own sense of need and longing and yearning to another person. I think you're attracted to somebody who has lived somehow a parallel life to your own, that there are connections along the way that make it possible to intimately relate to each other, not quite knowing why. Uh, action! kind of character I'd really love to play. Say she's a fallen femme fatale. She's a femme fatale that has been uh, trapped by her own mistakes. Did Allegra get lucky? Amy. Well, did she? We capture her at a point in her life when she is holding a tragic secret that we find out about at the end, which completely changed her forever. There are people that you want to see on screen. Well, it was just clear from the very first moment that there was this electricity between, between the two of them. I always wanted Gabriel on this film because he is absolutely burning to me. He is that very soulful, very um, inhabited person. Gabriel's inner world, I knew, um, had a resonance with mine. If our relationship on screen works, that there's, a, there's a reason why. She's Charlotte Randall. Like many people, kind of brought up with these iconic images of her. I've seen pictures of Charlotte Randall with people in photographs who melt away and were just drawn to that. One of the most photographable faces in, in modern cinema. I'd like it to be all the things that you hope for, intriguing, provocative, and to touch something deep. You, you remember something that touches you deeply. There's a lot of heart in the film, and there's a lot of heart that Gabriel and Charlotte bring to the film. I think it explores loneliness really well, and that search to find a kind of a peace, and hopefully a match in someone else, looking for the same thing how unexpected that is when it does happen. My influences for this film are very much French cinema of the 70s and 80s. The great tradition of great noir relationships. Romy Schneider and Michel Piccoli and Catherine Deneuve and Yves Montand and great filmmakers like Anna Corneau and Jean-Pierre Melville and Claude Sauté. There's a, an elegance and an emotional modesty and reserve to that cinema, which I find really quite exciting and beautiful. And this is my version of it. <laughs>